Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 memory modules feature customizable multicolor lighting and are designed for overclocking with XMP 2.0 support. Give your build a unique look with vibrant RGB LED memory by Corsair. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Hey guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is going to be my ultimate home theater PC build and I'm actually getting into the process of building today. I've been planning this for several months at least and actually formally started planning it about a month and a half ago at least as far as announcing it on the channel. Um, and it's been a bit of a challenge actually to get up and running because there's several things that I want this home theater PC to be able to do. Uh, it needs to be able to capture directly uh, from a digital cable service subscription, which I have via Frontier Fios here. Uh, it needs to be able to play video games at high resolution. I have a 4K TV here behind me. And it also needs to ideally be able to play the newest games, which means it needs to be able to play DirectX 12, which means kind of needs Windows 10, at least on the gaming part of the system. Let me explain a little bit further, though. All right, I don't know if this is poetic justice or what, but this is my old school Windows Media Center remote control. I've had this for years. I, I feel like this is at least 10 years old. It's no longer working. I actually completely disassembled, disassembled it and cleaned it out. That's okay though. I have a replacement um, lined up, my Harmony 700 right here, although I do not yet have that configured. So um, for the time being, we'll stick with the keyboard. So basically, if you want to build your own HTPC and you want to have it be a DVR, there's a couple ways to get the TV onto the computer so you can watch it. One is over the air broadcast, um, and for that you can get a relatively inexpensive TV tuner card and pop it in there, get your over the air broadcast. You will be limited to what is available over the air though. So if you want to take it a step further and go with a cable connection, you need to rent a cable card from your cable service provider. Um, sometimes they will charge you a rental fee, like Frontier charges me five bucks a month for mine, which I think kind of sucks, but it's what you got to do if you want to build your own thing. And compare that to like DVR rental prices, which are usually in the $15 a month range and it's not terrible. Oh good, my air conditioner just turned off. Now the cable tuner cards, especially the ones that are compatible with cable card, uh, can actually be fairly expensive and that's why I've been hanging on to my Seton Infinity V4 down there for so long because uh, it can actually do four TV stations at once. It's got four tuners built into it. But Seton as a company has kind of gone under. Uh, it's still functional as far as the website still works. You can still get support for their devices and download drivers and everything, but they're not really in development anymore. There's also a lack of support for them. So in order to get this, which is the channel guide, the electronic programming guide to download onto your HTPC, the best and easiest and most fluid and functional and doesn't cost any money way is this, Windows Media Center. But Windows Media Center only shipped for free with Windows 7. You gotta pay for it with Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, so you can do that and use it that way as well. But again, that negates my ability to have Windows 10 on here and play DirectX 12 games, so therein lies my dilemma. So what I've decided to do, in an attempt to appease y'all, because I asked for your feedback about a month, a month and a half ago on this, you guys said that I should ditch this system. I should have a single system and that's all. You also said I should wall mount it. I'm gonna to get to that at some point as well. So I've decided that I'm going to ditch that Seton Infinity TV, TV tuner uh, card because the other option is to go with something by Silicon Dust, the HD Home Run Prime. So I'm gonna run over to Fry's. I'm gonna grab one of those HD Home Run Primes. I'm gonna see if it plays nice with my cable card. If that all works, then I should be able to use Plex. And Plex is like a home theater PC front end. Uh, that you can use to navigate through your media and that kind of thing. That was actually the other option I was looking into before I've made this decision for what I'm gonna do today. Is there a software, or some piece of software I could install on my existing home theater PC that I could set up to cap uh, to, to schedule recordings and everything for the DVR? Um, but it's just, it's very challenging to find something that uh, is Windows 10 support, has support for the Seton Infinity TV, and can also download that electronic pro programming guide. There are options to do it, you can sort of jump through some hoops to get it to download the thing from uh, IMDB because IMDB has all the t uh, TV channel listings. But all this is to say, I want something that's a little bit simpler and that works a little bit more straightforwardly, if that is a word. So I'm going to go with Plex, which I've used before. It's a great pr front end. And if you do have to pay a subscription, either five bucks a month or 40 bucks a year uh, to get the Plex Pass subscription. But that does have the functionality to download the programming guide should work with Windows 10. I'll ditch Windows Media Center, and then that will also theoretically allow me to build a system that is just a single system 
Rather than having a dual system set up with an older Windows 7 system doing all of the um, capturing of the TV and then another system that I actually use for gaming. Funny thing is this will allow me to do what you guys asked for originally because you wanted me to do make it Ryzen based so I'm going to go with that. Uh, I've got my motherboard here too, the Crosshair 6 Hero from uh, Asus because that has the AM3 mounts on it which I'm going to use for my fanless cooler which hasn't arrived yet but hopefully soon. And if I can get that system set up and working with Plex Pass, then I should be able to ditch, ditch that system completely, wall mount this, get my VR and everything set up and be good to go. But for now, let's head to Fry's. Be a good boy while I'm gone, okay, hero? He's, he knows I'm leaving, so he's acting all, all, all melancholy. Didn't know they sold that sort of thing here. Look how desolate the Apple Center is at Fry's. It ain't no genius bar, that's for sure. Anyway, the guy said uh, IL4243 for uh, TV tuner cards. This is all Apple stuff though. I think it might be over here. All the rows of empty shelves where they used to be video cards, all bought out by mining. Oh look, they got a GTX 1060 in stock right here. Look, there's even a pile of them. That must be a pretty good. Oh my God! Aren't these aren't these like these are, these are like 250 bucks MSRP? Price has been remarkably helpful today. It's probably because it's like a Thursday morning and no one is here. All of the TV tuner cards over in the actual PC area were not the ones I was looking for, so I asked, and uh, it's over here in the AV section. Makes sense. All right, I've discovered it uh, thanks to Laurent here. What's up, Laurent? We got the HD Homer Prime. Uh, so, it's a nice retail box, of course, and <laughs> I'm going to take it out of the box once I get home, but uh, thanks for your help, Laurent. Yeah, no problem, Bitwit. I'm oh, just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing shade, that's hard. Entering the impulse buy section. Oh. oh, look at all these things. Look at that. You got a grill cover, charcoal, get your charcoal up and running. Oh, food, food, no. Resist. Don't buy anything. Hey, canned air, though. I can always use more candy. No, I have an air compressor. It's fine. Sour Patch Kids. What is this, a Primo Chill order? <laughs> Success. We have it. I'm gonna head back home for the dogs and uh, try, to try to drive safely. This is what it's like when I come home after the dogs have been by themselves for a while. Oh, hi there. Hi there. Can I, can I open the door? Can I open the door? Hi. Chaos. Calm down. Okay. okay. Let's go outside. You're such a happy boy. Nori, stop barking. Stop it. Stop it. Oh goodness. See here, I can move sometimes. Woo! They're fast. All right, so the dogs have calmed down and I am now successful in my uh, run over to fries to grab this, so cool. The only real reason I'm sticking with the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard right now is because of the mounting thing that can accept the AM3 mounts because I'm gonna try to do a passively cooled 1600, well, 1600X over here. Um, that's not necessary for this, so just bear in mind, I know, I know there's a lot of impracticality going on here and I don't care. So I guess, I guess that's what I'm pointing at. This is like, this is a crazy overkill motherboard for this project. Um, in fact, I could easily use uh, the, the X370-F that I just got, but I actually have two of these, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, anyway, beyond that, I have, of course, the Ryzen 1600X CPU right here. Again, this one doesn't make the most sense because if you were doing this, practically speaking, you should just get a 1600, especially since I'm probably gonna be passively cooling this, well, hopefully passively cooling this, and making it, uh, I might need to underclock it or something like that. So it'd be much more practical to go, to go with the 1600, but I'm gonna get a lot of use, a lot more use out of my 1600 because I've got both of them. And the 1600 I'm more likely to drop into builds for people because it's a more practical price to performance processor. So that's why I'm using that. For now, I'm just sticking with a Wraith cooler for it, but uh, I do have that passive cooler coming in very soon. For memory, I've got uh, Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is a 3000 speed kit. 
should work just fine and it's low profile so shouldn't conflict with that cooler once it arrives. Uh, for an SSD I just have an Intel. This is actually the same SSD that has been doing a great job in my former capture and streaming system. Uh, I believe it's an Intel 335, although I could totally be wrong about that, but Intel, uh, they, they do really good quality control and everything for the SSDs, so I just want something I know is going to last a long time, and I'm pretty sure this has a lot of life left in it. Only 240 gig, but it's just for the operating system, and I can add on something later on to do mass storage for games and DVR recordings. Uh, I got a 1080 Ti. I don't know which 1080 Ti I'm actually going to use in this system yet, but for now I'm just using this so that the drivers install appropriately. So there it is. Uh, oh, I, I got to grab a power supply too, but I'll, I'll grab one of those from the garage. There's my old keyboard, which look, it's missing the key right there. I'm going to replace this at some point too, but uh, I'll have to search and find one. Finally, I'm going to be doing just like I did last time, I think, and installing everything just, I'm just going to do it right there and build an outside of the box system to get everything up and running because I got to make sure everything works before I go on to the next phase which will probably be the next video covering this project where I'm actually wall mounting stuff but I'm not going to go to all the trouble of setting that stuff up until I know that this is going to work for the purposes it was in it was designed for so uh, I'll be back hopefully in a few minutes and uh, show you guys how this is all functioning So after getting the base hardware set up, as far as CPU, motherboard, memory, graphics card, power supply, I of course went through the software installation, so installing Windows 10, getting drivers updated, uh, getting the graphics card driver installed, and then I was able to actually move on with uh, the more specific stuff to getting the HTPC set up. So uh, the HD Home Run Prime, actually, I went ahead and did an unboxing of, took it out, basically it comes with the unit itself. Uh, you get an Ethernet cable, you get an AC power adapter, and you get a little bit of documentation. Uh, now this works differently than my Seton Infinity V4. In fact, it is a network connected device. It's not meant to connect directly via USB to the computer. So all you do is plug in the, well, you're supposed to plug in the power last, but you plug in a coax cable to your cable feed, uh, a network connection, an Ethernet cable here going over to my router, and then of course that uh, cable card Fortunately, my cable card is already registered uh, and set up with uh, Frontier, so I was just able to plug it in and I didn't have to contact them. Uh, and then this is a device on the network. Uh, the nice thing about having it on the network is that any device connected to the network, and there's various applications and whatnot that you can use to connect to it, but like, so any TV, or sorry, any computer that you had connected to the network, uh, you could have reach out and access the three tuners that are in that and then use it to tune into cable TV or uh, whatever else you're watching. For HD Home Run Prime setup, you just have to go uh, to a URL that they indicate you to go to in the quick start guide. And then from that URL, you can uh, see that the HD Home Run Prime is connected and there's some additional functions you can access there. I'm not going to go through all of this, but there's a couple ways to do this. Now, uh, Silicon Dust actually provides software for the HD Home Run Prime. And that will allow you to do basic TV tuning and live TV and by default out of the box you can do I believe up to one day of programming guides and then you can watch live TV. Now you can actually pay Silicon Dust uh, an extra dollar amount per month to enhance their software, include DVR functionalities and give you two weeks of electro electronic programming guide download functionality. However, since I already know I was going to use Plex, uh, you can actually use Plex instead of the Silicon Dust software, uh, although with Plex I did want the Plex Pass to get things uh, going and, and have access to the higher level functions. Plex Pass is five bucks a month. So all that is to say for the HD Home Run Prime, I really just pulled up that website, verified that it was working properly, and then I went directly over to the Plex software. Plex I downloaded, uh, got installed. Plex as a two-part software because there is a server-side software, and right now I'm running the server software on this machine. Once the Plex server software is set up, you go ahead and install the Plex media player software and that will allow you to, um, it gives you a better UI for accessing all the media. Uh, it has a 10 foot interface so you can set it up on a TV or something like that. So once the Plex software was all installed, I was able to go in there, access the DVR portal. It is still in beta, but uh, it's been working just fine for me so far. 
and I could go in and uh, do the electronic pro programming guide. So at first I actually reached out to the TV, TV tuners to uh, scan through all the channels and see what was available. And then it was even a little bit fancier than Windows Media Center has been uh, as far as the electro electronic programming guide goes. Based on the TV channels that were detected, it just automatically looked and said, oh, okay, here is your uh, cable service provider. It happens to be Frontier Fios. And then it uh, plugged that in and was able to get the programming guide. And of course you need the programming guide in order to schedule stuff. And guys, that is uh, gonna have to wrap it up for this video. I know I'm not finished, and this is definitely gonna be a multi-part uh, video. I obviously have everything just sitting out here. I need to do the wall mount thing. I'm working on some ideas for that. I actually have some really cool ideas for that, um, but I, I'm not gonna tell you guys about those yet. So that's coming soon. I should probably activate Windows. That would be a good idea. I have some more setup to do with Plex and the remote control and everything to make sure um, it can access it from the couch. I ordered a replacement uh, uh, wireless keyboard with a track ball to replace my existing one that's uh, really on its way out. All that stuff's very exciting. And um, oh yeah, well, I also got this. This like literally just arrived in the mail. So I'm uh, going to see if I can passively cool my Ryzen CPU. I'm probably going to do a separate video on that just to see if that's even possible for anyone who wants to do it, whether it's for a gaming PC, HTPC, or otherwise. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button, of course, if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, because I've got lots more on these projects coming up very soon. We'll see you guys in the next one.